We're going to continue our discussion of waves by doing some wave anatomy, or parts of a wave. First of all, this line that's the center of the wave here is called the line of equilibrium. That's kind of where the medium would be if there was no wave in it. These maximum points right here are called crusts. So notice I have one crest right there, and I have another crest right there. These minimum points, the lowest that the wave gets, those are called troughs. And I have one right there. And notice that I have another one right there. Next, we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental measurements that you could make of a wave. And that's called its wavelength. The wavelength is the horizontal distance between corresponding points on consecutive waves and you measure it in meters. So if you notice here, here is one full wave and here is a second full wave. So the wavelength, which can be represented with the Greek letter lambda, literally is how long this wave is since it follows the length of one wave. So if I measured that in meters from here to here, that would be one wavelength. But I can also measure a wavelength between troughs. So if I measured from one trough to the next, that also would be a wavelength. That's the same distance. I can also measure a wavelength between crests. So the wavelength is how long a wave is measured in meters. It is, crests are one wavelength apart and troughs are also one wavelength apart. Another fundamental measurement of a wave is the wave's amplitude. And the amplitude is the distance that a wave rises or falls from the equilibrium position. So I could measure an amplitude from a crest to the equilibrium position I could measure the amplitude from a trough to the equilibrium position. So I could measure amplitudes here, and I can also measure amplitudes with troughs. So I would literally, with a ruler, I could measure that distance, or that distance, or that distance, or that distance, to measure the amplitude. The greater the amplitude of a wave, the more energy the wave is carrying, and also the more energy it took to make the wave. So the greater the amplitude, the greater the energy. Another thing that I can measure about a wave that's very important is the frequency of the wave. The frequency is the number of full wavelengths that pass a given point in one second. So let's try to measure the frequency of this wave. First of all, we're going to need to have a given point, a reference point, so let's use this point right here. Next what we're going to do is we're going to let 10 waves go by and we're going to find out how much time it takes for those 10 waves to go by using our special magic counter thing. So ready? Let's give it a try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks like we had about ten waves go by in five seconds, which is really having two waves go by every second. So the frequency could be said to be two waves per second. Or, instead of waves per second, we sometimes use hertz. Hertz means one per second. So the frequency of this wave is two hertz, or two waves per second. Another thing we can measure about a wave is called its period. The period is defined as the time required for one complete wave to pass a given point. So as the waves are going by, you can see it takes a certain amount of time for them to go by, so the amount of time for just one wave to go by is called the period. So to measure the period, let's first of all mark off a given point, and 
then we're going to use our special stopwatch to figure out how much time it takes for the wave to for one full wave to go by this given point. So we started off at 1.3 seconds. Actually, let's write that down. 1.3 seconds. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to move one wave as best as I can. There we go. So it ended at 1 1.86 seconds. So So if it took from 1.3 seconds to 1.86 seconds for one wave to go by, that's a dif difference of 0 0.56 seconds. So we would say 0 0.56 seconds is the period or the time for one wave to go by. Once we've defined things about a wave, such as its frequency or its period or its wavelength, there are some useful calculations that we can do about waves. So let's review real fast here. First of all, the frequency of a wave is the number of waves that goes by per second in one second. The period of a wave, on the other hand, is how many seconds it takes for just one wave to go by. So I could see, for instance, that there's a relationship between them. So if I have two waves that go by in one second, that would be the frequency, two waves per second. Therefore, I know that if it takes one second for two waves to go by, it really only takes half a second for one wave to go by. So I can see that there is a reciprocal relationship between the two. The more waves that go by per second, the less time it takes for just one wave to go by. So I could write that as the period of the wave is equal to 1 over the frequency of the wave, or I could write the frequency of the wave is 1 over the period of the wave.